Okay, there's two talks left today. Well, actually, technically four, because the final talk of the day is three guys talking in 20-minute talks. Um, all about roughly the same thing. It's actually really cool. But <laughs> up now is, uh, I think you've spoken at, what, three layer ones now? Yeah. Yeah, Luis Eduardo uh, comes back every year with something new and different. And this year he's work on, working on something called echolocation for Wi-Fi. Or is it just echo Wi-Fi location? Whatever. <laughs> the end result is the idea of trying to track somebody as they move through publicly available access points to find out where their location is, uh, taking advantage of the uh, worldwide Linksys network in order to follow people around. So, Luis? How's it going, guys? And girls? Everybody awake? OK. Wake up. So as Noid said, third time here, I think, speaking. Thanks for letting me do that. And this is something hopefully cool. I gave a talk about this at TourCon Seattle a few weeks ago. It was mostly vaporware at the time. And now actually I have something. And the idea here is a project that I really don't know where and how it's going to go, if it's going to go somewhere. And if you guys have ideas, just talk to me later or email, and you're going to see you can help a lot with this. So let's get to it. So I'm going to talk. Oh, I don't see the same thing. This sucks. Um, so I'm going to talk why did I come up with this. It wasn't that long ago. It was probably like a month and a half ago or two months ago. Um, and how it works, uh, the possible things. Can I do this to make it better? Yeah, for me. Um, the possible models, how to implement. There are two ways to do that. I'm going to talk about the possible two ways again. This is, I did one, one of, used one of the models that I created. Um, I'm going to talk about phase zero that was at Torcon um, and what didn't work. Uh, then I had phase zero one, and it kind of worked. have some stuff to show. Uh, what we're planning to do next, and what else is out there that do kind of the same thing? Uh, I'm going to be... Okay. So, this is nothing really new. Um, when I found this out, I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I'm going to do something really awesome. And I found out that Microsoft Location Finder has been doing this forever. I went online, I'm like, oh, how about this? And you go to the NetStumber forum, and there are posts from 2004 about something related to this. I'm like, oh, this sucks. I'm really outdated. <laughs> and then I said, OK, this is old. Forget about it. And then I saw that when you, if you have an iPhone or any new decent phone, you have Google Maps, and you say, locate me. It uses triangulation from the cell towers to do that. But if you have Wi-Fi enabled, it gets more accurate. How does it do that? It's in a very similar way. It looks at all the access points that are around, and it's going to tell you where you are. Um, how does that work? So I started thinking about this. I'm like, this is really cool. It's really convenient. But at the same point, I don't know if I like people tracking me uh, or somebody tracking me. I'm like, so if somebody has um, is able to track me, I want to do something that you can use for good or for bad as well. Um, proof of the point here is to say that some uh, of these services are really good and they have a meaning, but somebody might be doing this for bad purposes as well and you don't even know it. Um, so that's it. And I'm lazy. I'm a horrible programmer. So I want to use stuff that is out there and doesn't give me too much work. So what is echolocation? Echolocation is the ability of having problems with PowerPoint karaoke here. Um, <laughs> it's a common method of information about a remote uh, object, doing, like bouncing signals, like radars, like things like that. So the name came Echo Wi-Fi Location because we use Wi-Fi to do that one way or another. Everything started with understanding how things were, how the existing technology works. When, when I say technology, I say the, 
the, the tools that are out there, like Microsoft Location Finder, Apple iPhone, everything that today is using that. How, how does it work? Um, how do they make this work? And I'm going to talk about this at the end. Um, and then I said, okay, so now that I kind of understand how they're doing that, I don't want to do the same thing. Uh, I want to do something that the community can benefit from it. And again, if you think this sucks, that's okay too. Um, but without reinventing the wheel. As I said, I'm lazy and I want to do things in a smart way, quotes and quotes, um, and use the maximum of existing technology as possible. So why do I want to do that? Uh, track people. Um, could be friends. So some people here use twi uh, Twitter or Dodgeball or something like that. It's more like a Twitter, Dodgeball kind of thing that you sign up for the thing. There's no website. There's nothing. But right now, like, different users have different devices. And when you show up somewhere, a list of people that you trust are going to say, oh, he's around here or he's in that place. You can get notified by SMS, you can go to a website, you can do something like that. This doesn't work yet. This is vaporware. Um, you can track your enemies, people that you don't like. Uh, you drop a cell phone or a PDA, some device that has Wi-Fi, drop in somebody's car and see where this person is going to or tracking the person exactly. Or employees. People say, I'm working from home or this or that, and then you find out that this person is connected to a hotspot in Cancun, Mexico, or something like that. Oh, I'm working so hard, and they're really not. The other thing is track devices. Um, some places, out, out, well, even in the US, you see all the time that people, you read on the news, oh, some laptop containing 10 million social security numbers were, was stolen somewhere, and this and that. And um, how can you track something like this? So if you put a software inside a laptop, that's not going to work. Somebody's going to steal that, replace the hard drive, and just get rid of it. So the idea is to use some Wi-Fi enabled devices. Could be old SD cards, could be the iFi. If you guys do, who knows what the iFi is? OK. Free advertisement, I guess. This is a camera. This is an SD card, but it's an iFi. It's an SD card that has Wi-Fi. So when you take a picture, it, try, it connects to whatever network you programmed and sends the picture, uploads to the internet, to whatever. So. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. So use one of these things uh, in order to put in a device, put a, on a slot. Um, SD slot on a camera or on a computer or something like that. If you can talk to a central server to say what it is, that's cool. Or just for kicks, right? Do whatever. So what do you need to make this work? You need monitors, aka APs, clients, could be laptops, could be PDAs, phones with Wi-Fi, anything like that. A location server, that would be the guy, the, the server that knows where everybody is. And then a notification server, which, which could be the same thing. Could be that guy sending emails, SMSs, or just a web posting on a web server saying where people are. Um, this is concern number one. Make something that, after I thought this was a good idea, I had to make it work but work efficiently at hopefully across the board. Something that is legal to a certain extent. Um, in theory, you cannot connect to people's open wireless networks to do stuff. Uh, again, keep it simple approach. And easy to install, especially, well, if you're a user that wants to have that, you want that simple, but if you don't want, uh, if you want to put in somebody's computer or cell phone or whatever. It has to be really easy to install um, in any form that you think, like malware kind of thing or not. So since we have this, or since we know what we had, we have to have to get this to work, what do we do? 
came up with two models. Um, and I'm going to talk about each one of them. I like this model better, though. <laughs> She's Norris, so that's OK. Um, so first model, the, client, the APs are intelligent. So you have to modify the APs to do that. So you're going to have the client walking by an AP. The AP is going to look possibly by the MAC address, which is not really effective, but well. well. And it's going to say, well, this guy is here. The AP has to talk to the server somehow and tell the server, this guy, I saw this guy around here. So that's model number one. OK, not with the PowerPoint magic. So again, you have to modify the AP. If you want to do that, the AP has to be intelligent enough to do that. So you'll probably get a, a Linksys WRT and modify the firmware to do whatever you want it to do. It has to be in a community wireless kind of way. Why? Because you need people to use this AP that, in this case, I created. So that could be effective. I have a few friends, but still, right? Um, you need this to be as accurate and broad as possible. So I doubt that people will develop that or help like using this. They wouldn't trust me. Um, so how it works, the monitors report back to the server, the clients they see, and it has to be, or uh, not, it has to be, the most logical thing is to use a MAC address, which is not that secure, I'd say. And <laughs> thinking about that is put a, make the AP stock somehow in an encrypted way with the server. Client-based model, that's the one that I actually tried to do something. The client, once it sees an AP that it can't connect, is going to go back to the server and say, hey, I'm, I'm here. And it could be any type of packet. We're going to talk about that. But at the end, um, the client is going to have to connect to a wireless network. That's the problem, right? Can you connect to any network? Can you connect to what type of packets are going to go through that network? And by the IP address that the client is coming from, the server is going to know where that guy is. Does it work? We're going to see. So what's the special software, right? We have to develop a client for the, for the device to talk to the server. The very first thing that came to mind when I thought about this was use some type of VPN client. So I'd have a VPN server, a VPN concentrator as the server, and use most of the devices today to have some type of VPN client. Uh, so the very first device that I tried to use was a BlackBerry, a Wi-Fi only BlackBerry that I happened to have, and it didn't work. The client pretty much sucks. I couldn't get it to, to work. So it could be me. I, I'm not that bright either. But um, so that was one of the things. Um, came, some people told me to use some type of DNS approach, since DNS goes through everything. So it could be like a special pro client that uses some type of UDP port 40, uh, 53 for that. That would work. Or even use some type of DNS client that uses some flags that are not used. So my server would look for that. Um, again, uh, so number two there. Um, problem is has to connect to open, usually has to connect to an open network. That could be a problem, right? You cannot connect to people's open networks. Uh, they're stupid. They're open. Some people do that by choice, but some people don't. Um, and apparently, if you connect to Metro Wi-Fi networks, that should be OK. But some of them, they have captive portals, and they don't pass any other traffic after you say, yeah, I'm not going to do anything wrong, except. Um, so that could be a problem. Ideally, I wanted something that w could work with any network. That didn't happen yet. And we talked about this. What type, what type of protocol to use to talk to the server? And yeah, talked about this already. Um, challenge here, uh, there are so many platforms. If you have cell phones, you have the iPhone, you have Windows CE based, you have, um, what's the Nokia? Forgot now. Symbian, thank you. You have Symbian, you have many other options. Uh, as for computers, you have Linux, you have Windows, you have a Mac OS. 
and unless you want to use a device, so like a, the SD card that I said with um, Wi-Fi, there are some old ones that do the same thing. But you should be able to program these guys and write in memory, like in the card, in flash, to talk to a server. The impossible model, but the more I think about it, actually makes more sense, kind of more sense. But use a stomp box, those EVDO routers. So we know that's all the time on the internet, and it's going to look for the for the for the clients. But since it could be moving, how do you know where it is? So you you could modify that to uh, or number one, use the existing GPRS network or EVDO. Don't kind of like the approach, and I didn't put it here. I thought I did. Uh, the other approach would be modify the firmware of, for example, the Kyocera box that you have like GPL firmware for that, and make that talk to the central server and say, I saw this guy around here. So what I did at first, does anybody know what this thing is? No, okay, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I was a car Japanese cartoon from the 60s, late 60s. I'm not that old, but the cartoon is, uh, it's Phantom, I think is the, the name. And this is the villain of the, the thing. Just Google for it, Phantom. So what did I do in phase zero that somehow worked? A mix of both approaches. I had a server, I had somehow... Um, I had control over the AP, so they were not modified APs, but I, I distributed amongst friends, say, hey, plug this in your home network. They're like, no, I won't do that. I'm like, please do it. I'm not doing anything bad. They're like, no, I don't trust you. I'm like, okay. So they did that. Um, I used the VPN concentrator. Uh, I was parsing logs using Splunk, the version that you can download from their website, and use the VPN client on demand. That was the idea. Sounds simple enough to me. Um, but the monitors had to be on, on an open system network. That's how the, so I told the client, connect to any network. Once you connect to the network, VPN, close the VPN with the server. What didn't work? Um, Again, I was using the BlackBerry, and that's the device that I had that I could play with it. And I tried every, it comes with like four or five types of VPN clients, and apparently none of them were, could talk to my server. So that was a problem. Couldn't pass the IKEA uh, negotiation. So that was a, right before Torcon. I said, oh, that's great. Hikari's going to love me. I don't have any really thing to show. But it was a 20-minute talk, and everybody's, oh, great idea. Get out of here. Let's drink beer. So post Torcon, what did I do? No actual coding done. Um, <laughs> you know. So I got, so I happened, work happened, actually, work sent me to a few places. I'm like, okay, this is a good good time to test this, so let's make this work. So I was lame and I used my own laptop with the VPN client, that the Windows one that works with my server. I'm like, oh, okay, gonna make this work, so let's see what happened. Um, I use, so now, so step by step here. Uh, so now that I can make the client talk to the server, now it's really easy. I just had to use some tools like NetGeo. Who knows what NetGeo is? NetGeo is what maps IP addresses to locations. And some of these services, they actually give you latitude and longitude for whatever IP address. Not that accurate, not as cool as what the other services are doing, but somehow actually it's, it's not that bad. That's it, that's it. That was a problem. This laptop, the day before I started, like, that I went on the road, I found out that the PCMCA slot wasn't working. So I wanted to take some sniffer traces of different things, including the services that are currently out there, and I couldn't because my internal wireless card doesn't work with OmniPeak. So that was a bummer. 
but I got some sniffer traces before the fact using the iFi and uh, laptops, Windows laptops using Microsoft Location Finder. The only one that I actually didn't do anything was the iPhone because my iPhone was hijacked as well. So this is what it looks like. And based on Strom's talk that you cannot usually see anything, so I tried to make it a little bigger. So after parsing and cleaning the logs, what do you see? You see the timestamp, the date and time, and what IP address that guy connected from. Obviously, I was in Latin America because of the 200. Um, in some cases, I was back here in connections. But, uh, so that's, that's the basic thing that you have to work with. So once you know the IP address that the guy came from, and then this is going to suck because you really cannot see anything. But basically it gives you the IP address, uh, what country it's coming for, from, or state if you're in the US, latitude, longitude, and the ISP that it's connecting from. So it's, then you have some cool stuff. Um, and after that, that was for the small letters. So after that, we have, if you go to code.google.com, there are several like cool projects that use the Google APIs um, for integrating maps with spread to Google Docs and things like that. So based on the laziness, I went to, I got all that information put on Google Docs, use the spreadsheet, and then use one of these um, Google code projects to map to the latitude and longitude to where I was, and actually it kind of works. So what is missing there that I wish I could have done better is where I was like in the sequence. So if I go back here, I can see exactly where like I started. I started up there, and that was the last place that I was down there. If you look in the map, it's I need to I should have put like labels there, saying he was here first, and then from here he went there, and etc. So what is next? We don't know. Um, some of these services, they're really doing some cool stuff. Uh, some are paid, uh, some are free still, but some are paid, and I think I'm going to try to do something else with this unless somebody comes back to me and say, oh, this is really cool. We should do something with this um, and leave it open to the community to use it. Um, if we want to do that, it's going to be this develop a client, a decent client across like multiple platforms to make sure it works. Uh, it doesn't have, v doesn't have to be VPN, could be anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, totally al automate the integration with NetGeo or something like that. Uh, and of course, with Google Maps, Google Maps would be cool. Um, real time not notification. So, this guy is here, you can say, Tell me when you see this guy, and then you get a not notification, an email, or SMS, or something like that. And ultimately, have a web service that you can say, I am friends with this and this and this people, and they can, they're able to see where I am and turn on and off as well. So you don't have the ex-girlfriend kind of problem that some of these uh, social network services have. I'm not causing trouble there, am I? So who else is out there? Um, so if you read the description of the talk uh, on the website, uh, it was saying that I was going to rant about the existing stuff, but actually I don't have much ranting about that. It's more like, so this is a security conference, and again, one of the motiva motivations that I had was to have the, make sure that whatever services, whatever is on my cell phone is doing what uh, I am expecting it to do. So when I say locate me, I want to make sure that it's not sending somebody that shouldn't be knowing where I am. And it's really hard to know if they're doing the right thing or not. Um, Microsoft Location Services or Location Finder, uh, if you probably you know that better than I do, but what it does, it has like a 60 meg outdated um, database that is in your laptop. So if you search for something in that folder, you're going to see a 60 meg um, password protected. I didn't have time to try to find the password, found for the old one. 
Um, but all the information is there, meaning when it, you say locate me, it looks at all the access points, looks for the BSS ID of those access points, and compare to that table, and say you must be here. So that's outdated, and as far as I could tell, uh, it doesn't talk to a central server at all. Uh, then I took a look at Skyhook. Um, Skyhook, what it does, I think it's more interactive. And if you look on their website, they actually do a, they say, if, you, if we told you that you're in this location and you're not, let us know. So kind of they're doing a dynamic thing like community-based updates. And then I have a sniffer trace that I'm going to show so you guys fall asleep at once. Um, and then the iPhone, I didn't have time, and a PC, I burned PCMCIA a lot on my laptop. And there's another service called World Tracker that does pretty much the same thing as Skyhook. Um, but so at least Skyhook and World Tracker, they, they have some cool ideas, things that probably I was going to think a year from now if I, still, uh, if I was going to still do something with this is even like from speed traps to other stuff. So let's say you saw a speed trap, you say I'm here, press one, two, three, four, speed trap. Uh, and that means one, two, three, four would be speed trap. It sends to their server, so everybody that is using their service is gonna get notified saying, close to you, there's a speed trap, watch out. So that's kind of cool. So I'm pretty sure that other stuff like this is gonna show up, uh, other type of types of functionality. And so security, we talked about that. I'm kind of a concerned about anonymity. That's the only major concern. I want to make sure that I know what my devices are sending out there. Um, some, I saw some products, but out of the US, that you actually install on the laptop to say if your laptop was stolen, first time it powers up, connects to a server. Not really effective, because you could just take the hard drive out, and that's it. Um, Again, who created and maintains the databases that all these services use? Um, and is it possible to break the system? Totally possible, right? Now, do we want to break or not? Uh, from switching sides now, forget. Let's say I don't have a cell phone with this type of service or with an iPhone that says locate me. Uh, I don't know if I like the idea that lots of people now know my BS, the BSS idea of my router at home and my gateway at home and the name of my network. It's nothing, but still. So a way to break it would be pretty simple, right? Just have everybody clone, use or modify the, the BSS ID, use the same BSS ID on all the possible gateways in the planet. So that would break it. Not really effective. Um, some stuff to show before we wrap up. So how this works, I wasn't going to show this. And if it's really lame, you just let me know. I'm not going to walk you through this. So this is Nifer Trace and what matters here. Now, I cannot see that either. But what the device does, it sends, so when you say, where am I? It sends a whole bunch of probe requests saying, who's out there? And then based on the probe responses from the APs, it's going to somehow either as I said, the Microsoft Location Finder, what it does, it compares to an internal table in your laptop. Other services, they just save somewhere, and when they talk to the server in a legal way, um, in an authorized way, like your home network, um, then it changes. That's the case with the iFi, for example. When you take a picture, it looks around, it does exactly that, um, sends a whole bunch of probe requests, and then based on the probe responses, somehow in the picture and the metadata, as John was saying in his uh, talk, uh, goes to the JPEG. And after it talks to their server, what it does is this. So this is actually in the picture after it goes through their server. So they put inside the JPEG the place that you were. So you can see what it's kind of interesting here. There's a BSS ID look like kind of thing here. And I can, uh, I can barely use this. See, there's a BSS ID kind of thing here. And at the end, it actually translates to where I was at the time, or where it thinks where I was. So there you have it. 
And do I have anything else important to show? Not really. So at this point, I guess questions. <laughs> no questions. You have a question. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so if you need to send me any ideas or emails or flames saying forget about it, just go to security conference to drink beer. I'll be more than happy to get those. And thanks especially to Noid and Evil and the whole Real One staff. Thanks guys. We have a break now? I think we have a break, right?